Okay. Vediamo un po'. Here we go. Ecco il primo. Chico. Se le zinzi c'è. Okay, other few people jump in. Okay, guys, we're waiting for for other few people to jump in and then we start talking and, and introduce you the guest host. Um, here we go, here we go. Just waiting a little bit more. Okay, okay. Okay, here we go, guys. Uh, welcome to Espresso con D3. Um, so Espresso with D3. Uh, this is the fourth episode. It's the first one that we do it with the international superstar. So we'll be nine Italian. Um, the interview will be in English, but don't worry about it. I will translate in Italian for the Italian fans. So, è la prima volta che facciamo un lottatore internazionale. Uh, è americano, ovviamente, quindi l'intervista sarà in inglese. E, ma non vi preoccupate perché io alla fine di ogni risposta cercherò di tradurre uh, in sintesi quello che ha detto quindi uh, the American people can watch it e anche gli italiani and the Italian people too so two languages um, so the guest host we said it was international superstar is American pro wrestler is originally from Massachusetts he's working all around the states he did uh, so many appearances with WWE Uh, he did a two matches on NXT uh, and one match in AW with Jax Hoger, or better known as a Jack Swagger, former World Heavyweight Champion in the WWE. Um, the, guest, the guest host is Chico Adams. Now, we jump in with Chico. Quindi, negli ultimi, ha partecipato molto con la WWE. Ha fatto tantissime apparizioni, ha anche fatto due match in WWE ad NXT e... Hey Chico! How are you? How are you? Do you hear me well? I can hear you. How about you? Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you? How you been? Oh, uh, excellent. No, put it straight. Yeah, put it straight. Excellent. Excellent. I saw you Monday on Monday Night Raw. Oh, yes. Right? So, um, probably many people knows, other people, they don't know the Italian fans, but Chico did the last appearance on Monday in Iro, this Monday, this coming Monday. Um, he played a role as a doctor, so to help Remistir, right? Ok, quindi Chico, per chi non lo sa, è stato um, ospite nell'ultima puntata di Monday in Iro. Um, ha fatto um, ovviamente una parte da medico, da dottore, uh, aiutando Re Mysterio nello spot, quindi nel, nella scena dove si è infortunato all'occhio con Seth Rollins. Uh, do you want to ta start talking about uh, this last experience with, with WWE? Sure, so I was actually on standby, so they told me to be ready uh, just in case they need me, and of course, as you know, things always change last minute, so... Um, but yeah, I got the call around like 12.30 in the afternoon and they asked me if I can come up for it and I said, absolutely, I never say no to you know, an opportunity. That, that was great because even in this kind of period with the pandemic, you're still working with WWE, so I think it's, it's really good, you know, to stay busy, not only with the social, but try to push in your name into it. So, uh, per quelli che non lo sanno, insomma, Chico, nonostante la pandemia, negli ultimi mesi ha lottato parecchie volte, ha fatto molte apparizioni uh, nelle ultime settimane e mesi con la WWE, uh, sia come security guy, quindi come sicurezza, come dottore in questo caso, e anche a WrestleMania. You did entrance with Goldberg, right, too? Yes. A WrestleMania? Ok, a WrestleMania, e quindi, insomma, nonostante la pandemia sta continuando a lavorare e è una grandissima cosa quello che lui sta facendo nonostante la difficoltà um, what else you did you did so many appearances in the last few months right yeah between NXT I've done Smackdown Raw I've done security I've been a doctor uh, I've done you know, Goldberg's personal security yeah 
little bit. I would say that was great because even with the pandemic, you're still working and and I know it, it's pretty weird, probably the atmosphere with all the fans and you know the situation probably in the backstage is a little bit different, but it's I think so many wrestlers, even the fans, appreciate you, the all of you, and even you, you know, still entertain the people watching the the TV show, so the WWE or AW in your case too, uh, at home. So it's I think everybody appreciate that. I mean, these are obviously tough times, but uh, professional wrestling and entertainment in general gives people like an outlet to get stuff. So I always a lot of credit WWE for still putting on a product for the fans to enjoy during these tough times. Okay. Uh, the Italian fans maybe don't know. Uh, they're not only you are pro wrestlers, but um, you work a lot. You're a great human being, first of all. You know that, that, I, that, I, that I believe it. And, and, and I'm proud to call you a, a friend, a big friend. Me and Chico mm -hmm. share a lot, of, um, a lot of experiences, mm -hmm. a lot of trouble together. Um, Chico were there when I did the match with Rowan in Boston in a backstage. So we shared that kind of moment, too. And that's, that's great because when you're alone, it's definitely different than when you share something really big with someone that they call you a friend. Also, Chico um, is a volunteer uh, for Make-A-Wish, right? Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, Make-A-Wish. So he tried to help, uh, I think, the kids against the, the Bali, right, com campaign. Well, we a volunteer for Make-A-Wish where we raise money for with critical illnesses. And then, of course, I also do, uh, like you mentioned, the anti-bullying presentations. I'll come to different elementary schools, middle schools, uh, boys and girls clubs, just to speak to the children, because that's something that I went through when I was younger, and it's uh, my way of giving back and letting them know that uh, they're not alone and that they'll be able to get through it. That's awesome. Um, Chico ha detto che, vabbè, ovviamente fa volontariato a una compagnia che si chiama Make a Witch. E, che è la stessa anche della WWE, è la stessa one per uh, WWE. E, si va moltissimo nelle scuole, quindi elementari, medie e così via, per fare una campagna non solo per aiutare i bambini più in difficoltà, ma anche contro il bullismo. Quindi è una grande cosa uh, quello che fa, gratis, eh, oltre che, che lottare. Um, we have so many questions, so I try, I pick few no, no not too many it was impossible to to pick all the questions uh the first one is why did you start wrestling um i just was always a big fan of it and even before i started watching wrestling i always loved entertainment like i loved uh movies video games things like that so i always saw myself doing something with entertainment i love uh making people laugh and making people uh feel emotions um, then I started watching Age, and I just fell in love with it. And as soon as I realized I wanted to get rest, like nothing else got in the way. Like I never, I never once thought about doing anything else. Since. So I'm just a big fan. Ok, Chico, Chico ha detto che um, gli è sempre piaciuto quando era piccolo, e um, ovviamente, scusate, la parte dell'intrattenimento è la parte che più lo, lo affascinava e che fin da piccolo si è sempre visto uh, fare wrestling e diventare un lottatore di wrestling perché l'ha sempre appassionato e gli è sempre piaciuto intrattenere i fan. Um, but you from you come from like Lee, Massachusetts, so it's a small town and a lot of people in Italy uh, they don't know how hard it is. We know because for us star wrestling as a professional wrestler is really hard uh, because we don't have uh, a lot of promotion that mm, work as a professional. So it's, it's really hard to jump in a big business. But I think the same it was for you because even for you starting with a small town in Massachusetts, and I don't think there's a lot of companies around. And, and you know, it, this business, it's hard. And when you come from a small town, it's even harder. So um, that's my question. How was your feeling when... When you start to say to the people, like, I want to become a pro wrestler, how, uh, how did you start to do wrestling? Which one? Why you pick uh, Florida? Then you move to Florida. Why? And, and so 
tell your story pretty much. 2007, I did a wrestling camp in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, WWA4, which a lot of great stars have come from there, like Apollo Crews, Heath Slater, uh, Moose Ojanaka from TNA. Well, so I did a three day camp, and then I was planning on going there after I finished college. Uh, the time I graduated college, they had uh, FCW in Tampa, which was wwe's developmental territory this is before nxc and so i felt at the time i felt like it would be smart for me to actually move to florida so that way i'm uh close enough to it where i could still make a name for myself and still be there in case you know they needed someone for a match or anything so i decided to go to dory bunks in ocala okay same roughly the same distance from orlando so I went there because Dory Funk, you know, WWE. was a legend. Yeah, of course. Uh, he had great of course. Cool. And I've always been a fan of NWA. And of course, in a name for himself. Me, Rainer. After I graduated uh, from college, a week later, I moved down to Ocala, Florida, um, trained there. Of course, things didn't go as I so I ended up uh, eventually switching schools in Orlando. I was driving back and forth from Ocala to Orlando here, and then to Orlando in 2013. And I've been living in Orlando ever since. So I have found, um, and then now I train, of course, with the with the Wild Samoan. And it's been an amazing experience, you know, meeting uh, the British Wolf, you know, a lot of talented people. No, è great. Always a great man. E Chico ha detto che ha avuto la... allora ha iniziato, mh, ha sentito che c'era un camp, un tryout um, in Georgia, è andato a fare un tryout con una federazione, e ha visto che comunque gli piaceva ed era portato e ha pensato che fosse giusto muoversi per iniziare la sua carriera e ha scelto la Florida perché ovviamente prima c'era la Florida Championship Wrestling che era la federazione come NXT adesso. E per i talenti, quindi la federazione di sviluppo e, mh, e ha scoperto che c'era la scuola di Terry Funk a Docala, una città qui in Florida ha iniziato con lui, con Terry Funk solo che era lontano a spostarsi da, per Orlando, da, da Ocala e anche da Tampa e dopo sei mesi di allenamento con lui si è, si è spostato con, con AFA e ha iniziato ad allenarsi con AFA dove ha incontrato tantissime grandi persone um, allora, you did great job i think in these years 10 years almost right well, maybe know, more years next next may so okay so 10 years and because you made a name for yourself first of all it's not easy in this business and you work in everywhere so all around the united states not only in florida but in so many places, Louisiana and Hawaii, I think. And you used to work in Massachusetts a few times when you came back. And so your name is everywhere. What I want to tell to the fans, and Chico has a great creativity, has, is a great character. Um, got a lot of great promos, different one, not, not the classic one. And it's really easy to work with you. And... Ah, your character is, is, is really good. It's really good. So, um, so I think you did a great job personally. And of course, it's, it's a lot of things that you want to do in the future, but, uh, your name is everywhere pretty much. So it's, it's good. It's good. And so I did simply that Chico, per chi non lo sapesse è un grande personaggio perché non fa solo il cattivo e intrattiene la gente ma inoltre uh, mh, diciamo che ha una grande creatività nel fare promo fa dei promo diversi, andatevi a vedere uh, su Facebook, su Instagram uh, mettete, digitate il suo nome uh, anche su Youtube perché fa dei promo diversi veramente divertenti, intrattengono tantissimo e dicevo che non è facile in questo business crearsi un nome proprio uh, come ha fatto lui perché ha lottato un po' dovunque, in tutti gli stati de dell'America, ha lottato per tantissime grandi federazioni. Um, we have another question. Um, a big wrestling fan. Uh, is a, she's a girl. 
So every kind of live that I do it, she's in. I think she's in too right now. And it's, it's, her name is Sere Zinzi. So she want to know, uh, you work for AW and WWE. Uh, which was the one that satisfied you most? So I think you can, exp even if you want to pick someone, but just explain like the different, if you saw different between the two promotions and your experiences with WWE and then with AW. To be honest, I think they were both equally rewarding uh, because then I'll explain why. So NXT, the two matches I had, they were both dark matches, which means that uh, they weren't televised. So the only with Leo Rush, right? Was, one was with Leo Rush. Right. The first one and... was Leo. The second one was. But... Okay. Okay. Dark match. Uh, it's not. They do film it, but it's not televised. So the only people that will see it are the people in the audience. Um, yeah. And of course. My biggest goal was always you know, to wrestle for WWE, so that was awesome. But in AEW's case, um, it was televised, but there was, of course, no crowd there. So they're both they're both very rewarding in, in different ways because one is WWE, you're in front of a live crowd, but of course it's not on national TV, so it's not like um, you know my friends and family at home could could watch those matches. But of course AEW. My friends and family could watch it, but of course there was no live crowd there. So they're, they're different, but they're both uh, equally rewarding in their own. So okay, what I've said is that... One or the other, because to me... It's... Quello che ha detto che per entrambe ovviamente le esperienze sia con WWE che con AEW sono state grandiose, la differenza è che è stato che con, la, con NXT quando ha lavorato erano dark match, quindi dei match uh, ripresi televisivamente ma non live, quindi non andavano in televisione, uh, uno era con Leo Rush, l'altro era in coppia, uh, con i match di coppia, e ovviamente è diverso quando uh, gli unici che guardano il match sono le persone live rispetto a quando fai un match come NXT dove lui ha lavorato in televisione, quindi anche gli amici, la famiglia, quindi tutte le persone che conoscono chi è, uh, hanno avuto la possibilità di, poter, uh, di poterlo vedere in diretta, in televisione, lottare. Uh, ha fatto un match con Jack Swagger, uh, adesso si chiama Jack Hugger, credo, uh, e, e quindi è stata una grande esperienza. Ovviamente si ricorda più la seconda perché ovviamente era in televisione e ha avuto la possibilità di farlo live. Intanto saluto, say hi to, to all the guys that the right comments down there so ciao Andrea, ciao Serena vedo che sei presente uh, Giuseppe di King Danza so it's another Italian wrestler that listen us, ciao uh, another fan say the hey W he doesn't like the hey W so whatever but um, non ti piace la hey W beh, sono due grandissime federazioni che ti piacciono meno e per chi lavora è molto importante lavorare in hey W I said it doesn't matter if you like AW or not, or if you prefer WWE or AW, uh, if you're a worker, a professional wrestler, definitely uh, they are two of the biggest promotion all around the world. So it's that that kind of place that you want to work. And it doesn't matter if you if you like it or not. When you start to be a pro wrestler, you start watching and, and, and look wrestling in a different way uh, because it's your job. So you want to work with the best wrestlers in the world and with the best promotion all around. And how was the backstage in AW? I've never been there, so. Um, it was nice. The thing is, uh, it wasn't like the whole roster was there. Only a uh, only small portion of the, the roster was there. So mm -hmm. there wasn't people. Um, and uh, it was very relaxed, very laid back. Uh, for me, I always place a lot of pressure on myself, especially for it being AEW. Um, so of course, for me, I was I was nervous, but I, I always perform better um, when I get those butterflies in my stomach. But, but no, it was everyone was super nice uh, except very. I think you did you did a good match for what they ask you. You did a good match because it wasn't a squash squash. So even Jack Swagger give you um, a few shot like give you the chance to to bring few shot in a move, I think, like a splash and a buckle. So, and I, I think it was better than a regular squash match, like I did with the Strowman. They completely dis destroy you and that's it. So I think, uh, of course, a lot of people criticize when you do like a squash match or something like that, but that's what they wanted. And I think if you, if you do your best, what they wanted, that's the best thing ever. Because that was what they wanted and Go ahead, go ahead. I look at it like uh, 
opportunity regardless. And if you do get offense in, that's then to me it's a bonus. But either way, like you look at someone like you know James Ellsworth, he wrestled Braun Strowman. He was just an extra, um, but you know he got over so well because he got to do a promo beforehand, and fans uh, reacted so well that they ended up signing him. So you never know what could come from um, a squash match. You know whether you get offense in or not. But to me, it's uh, it's an opportunity, and it's something that I know you and I will be grateful for. It would be great in your match. Ok, Ciro ha detto che, um, ha detto che ovviamente um, fai quello che ti chiedono e se, se ricevi, uh, se puoi dare dei colpi e puoi fare qualche mossa offensiva, ovviamente è un bonus e quindi è apprezzato il fatto che ti facciano fare qualcosa in più. E... Però è quello che ti chiedono e se me devi fare il meglio, diceva lui, con quello che ti chiedono. Um, another guy on a comments uh, was asking like, uh, I don't remember, let, let me check. Uh, ok, we, we train together with Afa, first of all, um, how is our relationship between me and you, or oh, oh, with Afa too, and if we ever fight together and we ever have uh, matches or we got booked together in other promotions? Of course, yes. Uh, you can answer that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me translate a second for the fans. Un fan chiede sotto, vi allenate entrambi con AFA, come il vostro rapporto, avete combattuto insieme e se mai siamo andati lontano, quindi in altre federazioni a lottare. Go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, both uh, before and wrestling. Many times. Uh, the first time he wrestled was at the IWA Florida uh, for Savio Vega. Um, and it was interesting because I was the baby face and you were the heel. Um, but that was the first time we worked, you know, one-on-one -on -one at a show. And uh, I remember it being a really solid match. I mean, I, I have to look it up because um, I haven't seen it in a while. But, um, and of course, you know, the last couple of years we've wrestled quite a bit uh, all over. In, you know, in Ocala um, at 2.0 at Thunder. So, uh, Ooh, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy working with you and I also enjoy teaming with you as well. I think we also make a, a, a solid tag team as well. Um, but no, I, I like working with you because, you know, we push each other. Um, I feel like we have good chemistry inside the ring and out and that comes a lot from being traveling together. I always tell to my wife that I see Chico more than you usually before the pandemic because yeah, we used to travel together pretty much for every show that, that we do. And we did a lot of matches. Yeah, I agree. The chemistry is amazing. And I think because both of us, we have that kind of character that perfectly mixed together, personally. So yeah, yeah. Even with Gangrel, we we went there together and, and everything. So she got the que insieme ha capito che i match erano molto intensi e si poteva creare una grande alchimia insieme e abbiamo combattuto in tantissime federazioni insieme ovviamente e siamo andati anche negli show uh, insieme quindi anche quando non combattiamo insieme spesso viaggiamo insieme e, e, e abbiamo la possibilità di, di condividere comunque questo, questa carriera ecco oltre che, oltre che il, il ring anche fuori uh, I saw, I saw Ashley, so hi Ashley, how are you? Hope you're feeling good and in Massachusetts. Hope we can come back soon when this pandemic will be done. And how do people say hi Chico, nice to meet you. Uh, and what else? Um, well, we already answered to that question, but how do you became friends with We met each other with Alpha, so in, in WXW. And another guy, another, another fan asked, so Big Rafa 24 chiede quanti titoli hai vinto? So how many titles have you won? Uh, I don't know offhand. It's been over, over 12, I would say. Um, I can name a couple of them. I can't remember all of them offhand. But my first title I've won, uh, it was September of 2012. It was the, the Bellevue Heavyweight Championship. Okay. Bellevue, Florida, which is near Ocala. Uh, but I'm currently the WXW champion, uh, which I'm proud to hold. I know you've held that. That's the most important one. Right, for sure. Um, I've also held the uh, SCW Florida Heavyweight Championship. 
Uh, one title that I'm proud to have held was the uh, – I've held both the Riot Tag Team Championships and the Full Throttle. And the reason I say that is because my partner was uh, Rex Backus. Rex. Way, um, early last year. So it was an honor for me to hold the title because he was someone else that I had uh, good chemistry with that I trained with before. And then, yeah, I just held other championships, you know, throughout Florida. Um, but, yeah, I'm always honored to hold – you know, any championship. And like you mentioned, the, the biggest one uh, would have to be the WXW just because of well, that athletic. You used to be like double champ, right? TV and WXW main one at the same time. Right. I, I won the uh, TV championship from uh, Lance on Hawaii. Yep. Was, and then uh, that, I did a, a run in in the main event and I, I pinned. Uh, on my match, you stole my title pretty much. <laughs> is it? No one, no one expected because I wasn't even in the match. Um, but the referee was uh, unconscious and he counted. Um, and fans still ask me how that, how it's possible that I won it. But I said, hey, the referee it was different. Was I think it was cool. It was cool. It was different. So why not? Uh, okay, Chico ha detto che ha vinto 12 titoli in totale. Uh, è attualmente il campione della WXW titolo che ho vinto anche io due volte e lui è attualmente il campione e l'ha vinto proprio in un match dove ero anche io all'interno lui ha fatto un run quindi non era parte del match è entrato e ha attaccato me in questo caso con, una, con la cintura e ha schienato e ha vinto il titolo nonostante non era parte del match ha vinto altri titoli ovviamente è stato campione della Florida quindi di tutta la Florida il campione massimo, ha vinto tanti titoli di coppia, quello che più ricorda i titoli di coppia è con un lottatore che si chiama Rex, che uh, purtroppo lo scorso anno ci ha lasciato perché ha avuto un tumore, uh, un cancro, l'ha superato la prima volta, quindi ha vinto la battaglia la prima volta e nella seconda volta uh, ovviamente non ce l'ha fatta. Questo sta dicendo, però il più importante che lui reputa più importante è quello da WXW, perché a parte per l'importanza della federazione, ma... Sì, perché è il titolo più importante che ha vinto, perché è una federazione molto importante qui negli Stati Uniti. Um, well, uh, another fan ask, Emanuele Scuotto uh, ask you uh, a dream match. So, what would be your dream match? Uh, so, I would have to say Chris Jericho, because um, of all the wrestlers that I've watched over the years, he's someone that I probably admired the most, because... You know, he's not, uh, he's not the tallest guy. I think he's probably like 5'11", but he made up for it with uh, his charisma and his showmanship. Like, to me, he's, he's uh, the total package, you know, whether he's in the ring, on the microphone, uh, entertaining the crowd. So he was someone that I've, uh, I've studied and I have admired, and I would love to step in the ring with Chris Jericho. Ok, quindi Cico dice che il suo dream match, Fagno ha chiesto questo, uh, sarebbe contro Chris Jericho. Gli è sempre piaciuto fin da piccolo e sarebbe un grandissimo match per lui, anche per l'importanza del lottatore, uh, comunque più di vent'anni di, di carriera, quindi sarebbe uh, grandioso. Un fan mi chiede quanto sono alto, uh, a fan ask me how tall D3 is, so I'm fan a 5'8, 5'9, so 1,75m, so I don't know why they ask me that, it's fine. Uh, another guy asked, um, what do you think about Fabian Eichner? Because Fabian Eichner was born in Italy, so now he won yesterday, I think, the tag team NXT championship uh, with his partner. So a lot of people happy in Italy about that because it's the first born Italian uh, won the title after Bruno San Martino. So they want to know, what do you think? I think he's a solid wrestler, of course. I remember uh, watching him. Uh, I think he beat uh, Shane Strickland for the Evolve Championship. Um, I was there. Oh, yeah, we saw that match together. Right, we did the uh, yeah. uh, Evolve WWE tryout, and so we, we hung around in case we were needed, but also to help out with the ring. And Yeah, that was my first time seeing him wrestle live, and uh, yeah, amazing <laughs> wrestling. I didn't know he was from, uh, he was from Italy, but... Yeah, it, he's definitely is from Italy. He was born there, but he never trained in our country. He never been, uh, he never worked with Italian promotion, pretty much. And so, there's a lot of disgusting about his Italian, hundred percent. Like the fans consider him Italian or not? That that's the point of the question. So. A lot of fans ask me that. What I think about Fabian Eisner, and I think the same. He's a great worker. We saw him. On a, on a evolve tryout and it did a match 
that day. So I think he's a great worker. Then it doesn't matter pretty much what I think. Uh, if if the fans consider him Italian, good. If you're not, if you don't feel that he represents you the right way, don't don't do it. That's it. That's that's pretty easy. And niente, insomma, il Chico ha, ha detto che nella delle lottature l'ha visto lottare al provino che ha fatto per l'Evolve e noi eravamo là e insieme e abbiamo visto un suo match che ha svolto quella sera quindi eh, reputa che è un grande lottatore e niente, io ho aggiunto semplicemente che la domanda che mi fate sempre cosa penso di Fabian Eichner se credo che sia italiano, se meriti così via, io la mia opinione conta poco nel senso che là è un grandissimo lottatore e se vi rappresenta o meno lo scegliete voi se vi sentite rappresentati bene festeggiate, se non vi sentite rappresentati non non lo considera italiano, molto semplice. Um, what else? What else? Um, well, I said many people they don't know that you were with me and uh, my man I rode in Boston, so we shared that that moment too together. It was great to see the TD Garden together, and uh, many people want to know, I think, how it works in the backstage. How do you? Do you become an extra talent? Why they call you and, and how it works? So, uh, my first time ever by WWE was in January of 2018. Um, and I got that through uh, Papa, the Wild Samoan, of course. So, WWE, uh, with him being a legend and with all the, his contributions to wrestling, um, they often will contact him um, and ask for extra talent. You know, they'll give him a number of males and females that they need. So that's how I got that. And then um, just after being booked enough times, um, I've also reached out on my own before. Um, and I always drop uh, the reference. He always encourages me. So I know that definitely helps a lot. So I, I would say for me, and uh, it would be through Rafa, the Wild Samoan, as well as um, just staying on them, just communicating with them frequently um, and being a uh, i don't want to say assertive, but be in what you want. You know, if you see opportunity. You know, there's an old saying, um, that squeaky wheel gets the grease. And that means it's the determination that you have, I think. So if you want to reach something, it's, it, I think it's really important to to do your best and try to be available every single time that they call you or someone need your help. And and it's really important. I, I completely agree. I think it's, it's really important. Uh, if you want something, definitely you can you can have it or you can reach. Uh, you can definitely achieve your goal. It depends how, how much determination you have it. Uh, of course, lucky is, it's, is a big part, but I think sooner or later, if you really want something, uh, And I can see it because you work, like you said, the good things about being friend, me and you, is not only that we're a good friend and we're honest to each other, but the good thing that we push each other to overcome the limits. Like if you do something really big, it, it pushed me to do it. Oh yeah, Chico's going, so I have to, I have to do the same or, so that, that's all the opposite. That, that's really good because it's a, it's a fair competition between me and you and, and friendship. So that, that, that's really important. It's not that easy in this business to find someone that work like you, attic, like you, behind the scenes, so not only in the ring, but uh, that, that, that's really important to me. You know this business now, a lot of people think that you, if, you, if you go there, uh, you can steal a spot of someone else and a lot of envies and, and, and stuff like that, and you're not that kind of guy. And we personally, we don't believe in this. I, I, we believe that if you really deserve a spot, they find a way to put you in. Also, too, a big part of it um, is being you know, being professional and being respectful. Like, uh, I've been back before and I've seen people, like one extra went up to Vince McMahon and, to, and obviously you're not supposed to do that. So the next day, <laughs> hey, you, you know, you guys are not allowed to do that. Of course, I know that, and most of us that were there knew that, but this one guy, being goofy, you know, he didn't think, and, uh, you know, I don't You remember know. that guy? You remember that guy in Boston with, with Becky Lynch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, so you know, being professional and, and uh, like you said, doing what's asked of you, being respectful, that, that goes a long way, and, and the people that don't take it seriously, they, they take that into consideration. You know, when they book people, they don't want someone that's going to, 
make a fool of themselves. They want someone. Yeah, to, uh, but that's a bad attitude. Like a bad attitude in that age. E Chico diceva che mh, ovviamente la prima volta che, inizi- che andava era con Afa, nel senso che Afa la- gli ha dato il contatto, gli ha permesso di andare là, Afa ci manda molto spesso, anche a me è successo. E tutti i rogue che ho fatto, i match che ho fatto, l'ho fatti perché Afa ha messo un buon nome, e anche per Chico, quindi per entrambi, e che ovviamente è molto importante in questo business farsi sempre trovare pronto e la determinazione che uno ha. Poi lui aggiungeva ovviamente che è importante l'attitudine che uno ha nel backstage, di come uno si comporta, nel senso di essere comunque umili, rispettosi nei confronti degli altri. Ci sono stati casi di persone che invece magari hanno un'attitudine negativa o qualcuno che invece cerca di in, presentarsi obbligatoriamente magari a Vince McMahon o persone così. Eh, questa cosa è poco professionale. Uh, another question was... Uh, Uh, which was your biggest inspiration, not only in wrestling, but in general, when you started, if you had a night, pretty much? Uh, well, the reason I started watching it on a regular basis was because of uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. This was uh, in 1998, and a lot of my friends in school had uh, the Austin 316 shirts, and um, he was such a household name, so I decided to watch it just to see why everyone was going crazy over it. <laughs> That's when I fell in love with it. So Stone Cold Steve Austin was the one that uh, drew me into wrestling. And then as the year went on, um, Chris Jericho was my inspiration because, like I mentioned earlier, he wasn't the biggest guy. Um, and he was around, you know, he made a name for himself when most of the top guys were a lot bigger than Yeah, him. at that time it was harder than now. It was, right. yeah, it was not that big. Like Jericho, Benoit, and Guerrero, definitely, they did that in a period that wrestling was was completely different than now. So credit for them, 100%. I feel like uh, guys that you mentioned and Chris Jericho, they helped uh, open doors and revolutionize it and uh, make this, you know, the smaller guys take them more seriously. And in his case, like, he, you know, went above and beyond just to stand out. Like I said, his, he always changed up his look. Um, he always changed up you know, his style and um, his mannerisms. Like, it was never the same. Chris Jericho all the time. It was like he always uh, reinvented himself. And so for me, like, and especially now, like, you know, for how long he's been wrestling, he's still on top, you know, at, at AEW. So he's definitely a huge inspiration. The one that made me, like, think outside the box in terms of, like, my gimmick and the crowd interaction and, and you know, things like that. He stand out, definitely, in a different way, too. So Chico, vabbè, dice quando è iniziato la sua so più grande. Io gli ho chiesto una domanda dei fan: era qual è stata la sua più grande ispirazione, non solo nel wrestling, però lui ha detto che quando è iniziato, ovviamente, uh, quello che l'ha un po' ispirato, comunque um, l'ha fatto appassionare al wrestling, è stato Stone Cold Austin. In quel periodo andava alla grande e tutti avevano la maglietta con scritto 316, 316. E, però poi. Più avanti uno che ha apprezzato molto è stato sempre Chris Jericho perché in quel periodo lottava, era un ragazzo più piccolo degli altri rispetto agli altri, eh, lottava in un contesto difficile perché negli anni, fino anni 90, inizio 2000, i lottatori di wrestling erano tutti molto grandi e quindi lui è riuscito a fare una grandissima carriera, a crearsi tante opportunità, a vincere tanti titoli in un periodo dove il wrestling era completamente differente e soprattutto ha aperto le porte poi in futuro ai ragazzi, uh, ai lottatori che oggi sono definitivamente nettamente più, più magri o comunque più piccoli rispetto ai, al classico lottatore, allo stereotipo del lottatore medio. I saw British Wolf on here live, so hi British Wolf, how are you? A friend of us. He's another guy. He's another guy that traveled with us every single time. He's from England, from London, and is working here in the states and hope we can sooner or later i hope soon back together travel together again, and, and maybe why not work in a ring together and it's not easy how are you doing with this pandemic how do you do the workout in your house i'm training at home every day pretty much i've been going to a local park um there's a park maybe like not even five minutes away And I've been uh, just doing a lot of like Hindu squats, burpees, burpees. Um, some, you know, obviously ring, but doing some wrestling drills like up downs. Um, and they try to incorporate uh, footwork so that way uh, to retain that. And also,
also at home I've been uh, studying more matches. I have a notebook, so I'll take notes. Um, That's good. The, the year I've done a lot of uh, different seminars, so I had like a bunch of different notebooks. So I made like one big notebook of all the seminars I've done, and I went back and and study those. And, uh, so yeah, just trying to think outside secret workouts, but also with wrestling. Cause of course, it's just like anything. You have to, if you don't do it for a while, you can easily lose that. So just trying to stay on point so that way, you know, when you do return to wrestling, we'll But be, being in good condition, I think, is the most important thing. So how you train, how you uh, recovery from, from the matches and even after the workout is, is really important. That's Let's make the difference sometimes. How do you maintain your body uh, fresh? So it's, yeah. So Gigo ha detto che gli ho chiesto, gli ho chiesto come si sta allenando durante questa pandemia e mi ha risposto come mi sto allenando io, nel senso uh, a casa e molto spesso va anche a un parco con, vicino a casa sua dove ha la possibilità di poter uh, correre, fare cardio, quindi fare un tipo di allenamento differente come gli Indus Squat o i Burpees famosissimi e ogni tanto... Uh, cerca di, quando è a casa, di studiare molto i match, uh, quindi c'ha un, uh, un block notice e scrive tutti gli appunti riguardo i match, cerca comunque di lavorare in questo modo, anche se adesso per noi è un po' difficile, uh, non essendoci tanti show e con questa pandemia, insomma, non potendo lavorare. Uh, nothing, that's it. Uh, I don't know, whatever you want to say. Oh, I, I have a question for you, if you like... If you would like to come in Italy and work on a show one day. Yeah, last, well, last year at this time, I got my passport for the first time. And for the longest time, I kept putting it off. But um, I did a tryout last May where the winner would go to Italy. I think it was uh, SID. So I didn't win that. Yeah, SID, yeah. So I didn't win that, but I did get to go to Colorado. Um, from that seminar, they picked people to go to Colorado, and I made a lot of connections. So, um, but yeah, I have my passport, and uh, I would be honored to, to wrestle in Italy. You know, if I go there for a show, I bring with you. I bring you with me. Absolutely. Uh, gli ho chiesto se, se gli sarebbe piaciuto venire a, a lottare in Italia e ha detto ovviamente che gli piacerebbe che lui pochi mesi fa l'anno scorso ha fatto un, un provino con la scuola italiana wrestling che è anche qui in Florida c'è anche una sede qui in Florida con Chris Silvio e ha fatto il tryout e hanno, non l'hanno preso però quel tryout gli ha permesso di avere un contatto in Colorado lui ha già il passaporto e che in futuro gli piacerebbe sicuramente uh, venire a lavorare in Italia io poi ho aggiunto che ovviamente se combatto in Italia cercherò di portarlo in tutti i modi e di proporlo alle federazioni uh, yeah yeah because I think I told you every time I tell you every time you have, you have something different, a unique character, and you bring something really special uh, to the show. Because you're that kind of heel or face, but you really have a great connection with the fans, even if you feel, and I, with the credibility that you have with the promos, I think you give to the show something really special, right? Something more, that's always. Because a lot of people, they think, uh, If you want to stand out from the others, you have to, you have to, I don't know, uh, do a lot of crazy spot or crazy stuff. There's so many ways to uh, pick the attention from the, from, from, from the people in the backstage or from the promoters or even with the crowd. So it's not, not only if you jump from the roof or you have that kind of crazy uh, style, like in my case, like different style, like flip and stuff like that, but... Sometimes with the, with the character, if you have a great character with your promos, you can go over and you stand out. And, and I, can, I can tell you, e posso dirvi a voi che Chico, in ogni show dove andiamo, in every show that we go, uh, the fans know Chico and, and Chance, even if it's not as his match, Chico sucks every single time. So it means that he's over, even if they hate him. Um, in finisce dove andiamo, stavo dicendo, quindi tutti i fan, anche se non è il suo match, cantano che Cico fa schifo e sempre, cioè lo nominano sempre, è molto conosciuto perché, perché ha un, un modo particolare, andate a vedere su YouTube, uh, go check on YouTube the videos of Cico Adams, he has his personal channel too, I think, right? You have the official channel of Cico Adams. Yeah, I do. Um, 
a search Chico Adams on YouTube, but uh, if they want to search for my link, it's uh, youtube.com slash Chico Adams BMW. Okay, okay, BMW like the, come la macchina, like the car. Um, e niente, se andate a vedere i match, lui anche i promo che fa, l'ho già detto prima, ma veramente dà qualcosa in più allo show, dicevo, quindi mi, mi piacerebbe portarlo in Italia perché ha un modo di lavorare veramente particolare, guarda, posso assicurarti che fa dei, dei promo differenti, differenti e la gente è sempre è sempre veramente curiosa di vedere lui anche quando lui non lotta lui è sempre nominato è in, in, sempre, dovunque quindi è un grandissimo lottatore so many fans say hi another guy say subtitles but in Spanish io lo puedo hacer però è lungo hacerlo in tre lingue è un pochino più difficile uh, doing it in tre lingue it's really hard uh, translate for, for every single person it's, it's, it's hard now we translate too so it's It's cool because I, I want the Italian fans to know not, not only the, 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 the Italian wrestlers, but start to know even the, the American wrestlers, but not the famous one because there's so many good guys. And even now, a lot of guys, you know, you know that a lot of guys signed for WWE, they came from Indy. So it's good to support these people before they jump in, I think. Because there's so many guys that deserve that spot and you're one of them. So it's that's why that's why I did this live because I think uh you have you have a different stories and and you're different characters, different character and and the Italian fans sometimes they don't know very well the indie and I think it's good to, to know the indie. Not only W or AW. And of course uh one thing I wanted to mention, uh I'm half Italian but i want to mention that both my uh, my grandparents, they have family from Italy. Like, for example, my grandfather was from, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing, but... Uh, what about Venice? Yeah, yeah, Venice, Venice. Yep. Uh, other side is from uh, the Bari, or Bari? Bari, yeah, yeah, Puglia, in Puglia. Well, I'm uh, you know, Italian, but I'm honored to... You, know, to you caught a promo in Italian one day, a few words, right? Yeah, yeah well, actually at the, uh, the Italy tryout. Um, I, yep. I, from the heart, you know, the, my story that I told about, because when I was born, I almost died when I was a baby, so um, I did my, we had to do a one minute promo, and then at the end, um, I said, my time now, but in Italian, and I figured, you know, um, no one else really did that, I thought the, the goal of this, uh, this tryout was to go to Italy, and I thought, well, it makes sense for me to, to, uh, to say something in Italian, so I wanted to make sure I was Right. I remember I, I wrote to you and I asked you how to say it just to be sure. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I think the, the, the pronouncer was good. It was really good. And yeah, I appreciate that. You know, I remember that when I was a fan, um, I went to the, in Rome to watch WWE and live. And, and Mr. Kennedy, uh, the first probably 30 seconds of his promo live, he was talking in Italian against our soccer team. So I, I really appreciate that because it means that you study something just to put your character over. So it's, even if not that much, but it's mean that you really care. Even if you go, if not on a TV, you go live, it's mean that you research on Google, on YouTube, like you did it, how they pronounce or how they say that in their language. It's, I think the fans have to appreciate that. I, I really appreciate that. So that you did it. It's, it's cool. Chico diceva che ha comunque origini italiane perché tutti e due i nonni uh, sono italiani, uh, da una parte sono di Venezia, dall'altra di Bari, come avete sentito, e quindi lui era sempre stato curioso di comunque conoscere le sue origini e, quando, e una volta gli è capitato, quando ha fatto proprio questo provino con il suo quale della Presti, di uh, fare un promo in inglese ma dire poi le ultime parole che erano my time is now, quindi il mio momento è ora, il mio tempo è adesso. In, uh, in italiano e gli dicevo che io personalmente apprezzo molto uh, i, i lottatori che uh, ricercano sempre qualcosa di, di differente o comunque studiano quando magari vanno all'estero nei posti uh, come si dice quella parola o come si dice quella cosa per cercare di, uh, di, di rendere il proprio personaggio over, quindi in alto uh, rispetto agli altri, e vuol dire che uno cura molto il proprio lavoro, è una cosa molto importante. Uh, yeah, I will say that. Yeah, I really like it. And your sister, 
she's trying to study Italian too. Because when I when I came in Boston, Ashley has me so many times to stay there and and try to. She was trying to learn uh, the Italian language, and she's not that bad, personally. To be a yeah, to learn by herself without a teacher is definitely she's good. Because our, our grandfather, of course, he spoke it. That was his first language. He spoke it fluently. Um, she would sometimes ask him if, if he could help her um, to teach her that. But he, he said, "Oh, you, you won't. You won't ever have to learn it. You you don't need it." Um, but you know, she always took an interest in it. And she always wanted to learn it. So I, I know she she appreciates the fact that you helped her. No, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. It's, it's something, you know, it's something different. A lot of people, they don't ask you, like, how do you say this in your languages? You know, a lot of people, they don't, they don't care. And, and, but for us, it's really important. So even a lot of people, they don't know where they come from. So what roots they have. It, and it's cool that you start or you try to learn. Even if, if you don't, you will not speak uh, the Italian or you're not able to speak fluent Italian. But it's good that you do you try to do it you try to learn your roots and your sister too so i, I like it I, I personally appreciate that and and nothing so thank you so much oh. if someone has some questions se qualcuno qualche domanda per cico prima che ci saluta che ha da fare uh, lui vi risponde tranquillamente qualche altra domanda i said someone has some question for you before you have to leave uh, or before this live will be done because we have an hour limit so that that's just how instagram works so our limit if someone want to ask you some question or curiosity or whatever they can they can tape that question under and person i miss you so much that's i really miss travel together and in and out of the ring in and out of the ring and it's not easy for us to stay home and don't don't work a uh, 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 fan, a uh, fan, chiede quando, quando avete lottato a Raw NXT e noi abbiamo scelto the team song. A uh, some uh, fan ask if uh, when we work for Raw and NXT, if we pick our team song. No, um, for NXT, I'm not even sure which. It was just a generic song that they picked for us. Um, AEW, I did have an entrance, um, but they didn't. They didn't air the entrance, and they they told me that they said you'll have an entrance. We'll film it. Um, but most likely, cut it. most likely it would be cut and you'll be in the ring because that's a lot of times that's how watch matches work. So, so same with NXT. We did the entrance. Many guys, they don't know. We did the entrance on NXT, but they, then they, they cut it. So, yeah, I mean, they usually don't, you usually don't have much of a say in, in your music. I mean, if you're signed and you're a big name, you might be able to, to say something, but usually, yeah, you, it's something that they pick for you. Sì, no, è vero. Dice che no, no, ovviamente, come dicevo anche l'altra volta, non, non scegli la musica, mettono la musica generale. E in AW gli è capitato, come anche in NXT, dicevo io, uh, che fai l'entrata, effettivamente la fai con una musica e tutto l'ingresso, però poi loro gli, ti dicono che la taglieranno quando, uh, quando andranno in onda. Uh, si vedrà direttamente te sul ring, però tu l'entrata effettivamente l'hai fatta. Another guy ask you uh, which is the different on a backstage, not on a ring, uh, between WWE and AW, like professional, uh, if you see a, a different, about the professional part. They're both, everyone was both, uh, I never had any negative experience, you know, either time. Uh, for AW, like I mentioned, there's a lot less people there, so there wasn't, you know, when you're walking around, there was uh, not too many people there. I mean, there's like a handful of people. Um, but no, everyone was super nice. Um, of course, for NXT, especially the first time you know, at Hotel Rush, it was the NXT after WrestleMania. And this was before before they were on the USA Network. They would film like four episodes. Yeah, the tapings. The tapings, right? The entire roster was there. And like every coach was there. So it was a lot more crowded then. Um, whereas for AEW, like I said, there wasn't that many people there for talent. So... Um, there's probably less pre like for me I know there's probably less pressure when there's less people there um, and also you know, you're filming something for you know, TV live versus you know taped also a different thing to do in Miami pressure because if you're on TV 
question. If you're running for live TV, I mean, you have you can't mess up. So of course, no, no. <laughs> like match for AEW, um, they filmed it the night before, and then they aired it the next night on Dynamite. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, when you're filming for live TV versus something that's taped, it makes a huge difference in how people react. Ok, dice che semplicemente uh, no, non ha trovato nessuna differenza a livello di, di backstage di professionalità, entrambi sono, sono molto professionali uh, e ovviamente spiegava lui che uh, in tutti e due i casi lui ha, ha lavorato con NXT ma anche con l'AW quando entrambe le federazioni registravano e facevano i tapings quindi non erano live e quindi questa cosa comunque un minimo ti aiuta rispetto a quando lavori dal vivo uh, dove magari sei un po' più preoccupato e dove se commetti un errore può essere visto uh, sì questo diceva però no professionalità di entrambe le parti ma immaginavo uh, Yeah, no, a lot of people ask me the same question if, if you saw something in the backstage, uh, WB or AW, which one worked better with you? I think uh, if that promotion uh, make millions or billions, uh, it's, there is a reason. It's, it's, it's not so they're professional. If you're not in this business, if you're not professional, you don't go that far. Um, even if you're fan, a phenom, like, you don't go that far. If you're not a great human being, And you know, if you're not professional in the backstage, that's what that's what we know. And a lot of people they, they don't know we're not in the business, but they're not. But we know that, so we that's that's why it's really important to like you do it, like make a wish, talk with people, do a speech at the school with the kids. It's uh, be a professional as wrestlers, it's not only in the ring or when you stay at a show or you work at a gym, but it's 365 days a year. And 24/7. Because people think like if you're a wrestler, it's it's only what you do in the ring, but it couldn't be any more you know far from the truth. Like especially with social media, there's so many talented people that they'll post something on social media where they get in trouble, or you know their pictures or their videos get leaked, or you know they get arrested. I mean, there's so much that can happen that can really um, negatively affect their career. Gotten fired, they've been blackballed just because of wrestling so like you said it, it's it's very important to be professional and conduct yourself in that kind of manner like i for me like i, I look at it like um you're always working even if you're on your phone on social media because you know one one mistake could ruin your whole career so you definitely have to you know be a good human being and, and um, be cautious of it can definitely affect your career yeah we're always talking about that about working Even if you're not in the ring, we're not in a show or training, always, always, always work on your social media, your image, try to be a, a good person and a real model because that's who we are. Uh, mostly now with the social media, you, you have to be a good example for the kids and the people like watch you, even if you're not a big star, but you have like your small crowd uh, around you on social, they follow you. So it's, it's really important how you act, so who you are, even if, if, if you're not in the ring. With that say, thank you, Chico. Thank you so much. Uh, really, thank you. I really appreciate. Thank you so much and, and nothing. Hope to see you soon. Say thank you to everyone, uh, all the fans and all the viewers who took the time. Like William Regal said, you know, the most important thing that anyone can give you is their time because it's something you don't get back. So even if someone just watched for a minute, I appreciate everyone who took the time to listen and watch. And I appreciate you inviting me to your show. It's a huge honor. Thank you. Look forward to it. Ciao, Chico. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Gra grazie ragazzi purtroppo mi sarebbe piaciuto parlare molto di più Instagram ci dà un'ora spero che vi sia piaciuto ho cercato di tradurre uh, il più possibile quello che ci siamo detti uh, di, di farvi di coinvolgervi e di rispondere a tutte le domande uh, spero che vi sia piaciuta questa quarta puntata dell'Espresso con D3 rimanete sempre sul mio canale Instagram perché prossima settimana lunedì annuncio il prossimo